this video, we're going to take a look at how you find derivatives with respect to different variables. Now, when you're finding respect to different variables, this is pretty much implicit differentiation. So we're basically going to take the implicit differentiation idea and, and extend it into finding different variables. So traditionally, we have been taking all of our derivatives with respect to x, even when we do it so implicitly. So with respect to x, the way we would find this derivative traditionally would just be take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Then we take the derivative of y squared, which would be 2y. But because we took the derivative with respect to a different variable, we have to multiply it by y prime. Derivative of 30 is 0. And then from here, you would solve for y prime. But that's not necessarily my concern for this video. So another way to look at this and a more formal notation. So let's look at this problem again. So let's still again, let's still do it with respect to x. So here's actually what's happening. So when I take the derivative of x squared, I do indeed get 2x. And what I've actually done with that is I'm multiplying that by the derivative of x with respect to x, essentially what that is. Now, we never write this because what happens to dx over dx? Well, it ends up canceling itself out. So you know, we've never written that down in that exact form. Now, with the 2y piece, the derivative of y squared is just 2y. We do indeed write dy dx. And so that's why when we learn implicit differentiation, why we actually need to do this. Hence, the y prime notation is the same thing as the dy dx. So I want you to take a look at this particular strategy, because this is essentially how we're going to be able to find derivatives with respect to any variable that I give you, even if it's not in the problem. Case in point, let's take the x squared plus y squared equals 30. And what I want to do now, really different from this, is I want to find the derivative with respect to a t. So what would I do here? I'm going to follow the same pattern that I did here. I'm still going to take the derivative of x squared, which is going to be 2x. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by dx, the derivative of x, with respect to its t. So the with respect to is essentially my independent variable. So that's the reason why we've always been using dy, dx, 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 everything dx. Well, when I'm doing with respect to t now, it's going to be dx dt. Therefore, the derivative of y squared with respect to t is going to be 2y times derivative of y with respect to t. 30 is still just going to be a 0. because that's not. So this is how we would find a derivative with respect to t. Now, we'll talk more in the coming days about what we actually do with something like this. But for now, the video here is supposed to just focus on finding these derivatives. So here's another example we're going to look at. This is the surface area of a cylinder. And what I want to do here is I want to find the derivative once again. But I want to do it with respect to t. And what that will eventually lead us to is we'll talk about the relationship between this equation and, and then its rate of change with respect to time. So the derivative of a plain old s is just 1. But because I, I took the derivative of s with respect to t, I need to write ds dt. Then I have 2 pi r h. Well, 2 pi is just a constant. And I'm going to group that together with the r. And that's going to be my left term. h is a variable as well. That's my right term. So this is going to end up being a product rule. So I'm going to take the left. I'm going to write it just as I normally do. Derivative of right, so the derivative of h is 1, but I have to write dh dt since I took the derivative of h. Plus, then I'm going to do right, which is just h, times derivative of left. 2 pi r is just going to be 2 pi, but since I took it with respect to t, I have to write dr dt. And so, quite literally, this is going to be my final answer. Maybe what I would want to do here is I always like to put my derivative terms at the back. And here, I'm going to actually want to move my 2 pi h, my constant, in front. It's just, just an organizational tactic that I would go with. So there's going to be my solution. The other two examples that I have in this video are actually in your worksheet titled Intro to RR Related Rates, Derivative of Implicit with Respect to T Worksheet. So I want you to take a minute to pause this video, 
Try both of these problems on your own, and then when you're ready, press play, and I'll have a quick review of them. That seems like a pause enough, so let's take a look. This derivative with respect to t, the derivative of a is going to be 1 dA dt. This is a constant. That is a variable raised to the second power. So the derivative of pi r squared is going to be 2 pi r. But then since I've taken the derivative of r with respect to t, I need to write dr dt. So this is going to be my derivative for number 3. And then for number five, this is going to, again, we're going to do the same thing. Derivative of V is just one, but then I have to multiply it by that dV dt. Here, pi, once again, is a constant. So I'm going to have pi r squared, which is going to be my left term, h, which is my right term. So this is, once again, going to be a product rule. So I'm going to write left, derivative of right, which is one, but then I have to write dH dt, plus right, which is h, times derivative of left. So pi, uh, pi r squared, very similar to this problem, is 2 pi r again, since I took the derivative of r with respect to t. We write it this way. And again, I would organize all of this just so that it would be easier to work down the road. Your constants should go first, variable second, and your differentials derivatives need to be the last thing. So here I'm going to move my 2 pi in front, h, r, which are my variables, dr, dt. And that's all a product. That's all being multiplied together there. And so for the time being, until we learn some further tactics here, this is going to be my final answer. So at this point, I would like you to go back to the intro to related rates worksheet, and I would like you to try the other eight problems. You can look for the answer key in the content library so that you can see the work that is used to complete the problem.